There's five steps to setting up advertising with Amazon. And I've used Amazon PPC to start and grow a million dollar Amazon business. And Amazon advertising works. Last year, businesses spent over $10 billion on ads with Amazon advertising. And the thing is in the US, 66% of all people that are searching for a product online start their search on Amazon. So if you're trying to sell a product, you should advertise on Amazon. And on average, for every dollar that a business spends with Amazon advertising, they get $4 back in revenue. This is a 4X ROI. This is a great opportunity. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a complete screen recorded tutorial on how you can use and set up your Amazon advertising so you can make a lot of money. The first step is to set up automatic campaigns. And I'm gonna show you how to basically get started with Amazon advertising. The automatic campaigns are the easiest way to do it. And I'm gonna do this and show you how you can start your first ad in just five minutes. It's very quick and easy to do. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. The second step is to do keyword research to try to figure out what searches on Amazon you want your product, you want your ad to show up in. And I'm gonna show you some tools that are gonna make this process really easy, including some free keyword research tools that you can use to double, if not triple, your success with Amazon ads. The third step is to set up sponsored product ads, specifically sponsored product ads with keyword targeting. And I'll explain what this is, but basically this is a way for you to get your product, your ad, to the top of the Amazon search results, which means more sales for your product. I'm also gonna show you five different types of keyword targeted sponsored sponsored product campaigns that you need to be running. Step four is to do product targeting. And this allows you to show up on your competitor's Amazon listing, which gives you a chance to steal customers from your competitors 100% ethically. And step five is to set up negative keywords. And this is one of the best ways to save a lot of money. When I do consultation sessions with different people, this is one of the biggest mistakes I see them making is they don't add negative keywords. And I'm gonna show you how to do that at the end of this video so you can save a lot of money on your Amazon advertising ads. And by watching this video till the end, you'll know how to set up and optimize your Amazon ads, which can make you tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. In this video, I'm also gonna be sharing the biggest mistakes I see people making with Amazon ads that cost them thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. So again, watching this video could save you a lot of money. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Travis. I'm a seven figure Amazon FBA seller. I have one product that's done over a million dollars in sales on Amazon. And I do things a little bit differently when it comes to Amazon. I have a video right here where I talk about step-by-step -step how I grew my Amazon business. So if you're interested in that, you can definitely check out that video. But I've been a full-time e-commerce entrepreneur for over eight years. In total, I've done over $5 million in e-commerce sales, but advertising in Amazon PPC has allowed me to be able to grow my business, to create a passive income stream, to be able to travel around the world, live in my dream location, and spend my time doing the things I love to do. And that's the power of Amazon FBA in Amazon ads are one of the best ways to increase your sales. And this video right here is part of a free Amazon FBA training series I'm doing on YouTube. And the way I'm doing this is, I will release the next video in this series once this video gets a thousand likes. So make sure to smash the like button. And once this gets a thousand likes, I will release the next video. And this is gonna be the most in-depth Amazon advertising tutorial out there. On top of showing you all the different steps for setting up your ads, I'm also gonna give you a free Amazon PPC checklist. I'm also gonna show you my secret Amazon PPC campaign that if you run, can and make you an 8x ROI, meaning for every dollar you spend, you'll get $8 in sales. After that, I'm gonna show you my secret tool for finding profitable keywords to target on Amazon, as well as how to optimize your Amazon listing so that you'll get more sales, which allows you to spend more money on advertising and ultimately to make more money. But if that's not enough, I'm gonna share with you how to get a free coupon to give you free money to spend with Amazon ads. And if you're going to be spending money with Amazon PPC, use this method and you'll be able to get free flights around the world. It's a cool hack that I'll talk about later in this video. Now I'm gonna share with you how you can set up your first ad with Amazon ads in just five minutes. It's so quick and easy to do, as well as all the different steps to setting up Amazon advertising. But before we do that, I need to explain what Amazon PPC is and why it's so powerful. Amazon PPC stands for pay per click advertising, meaning that you only pay money for your ad when someone clicks on the ad. And the way to access this before we go any further is you go into advertising and go into campaign manager. That's why it's called Amazon advertising or sometimes you'll hear it called Amazon campaign manager. And the beauty of setting up advertising with Amazon is it allows you to appear at the top of the search results. You can see that all these ads are sponsored, meaning people are paying to show up at the top of the search results. And the important thing to realize about this is you want your product to be at the top of the search results because when people search for a keyword, which is what we call the thing that they search for in Amazon. For instance, in this example, the keyword would be keto nut butter. When someone searches for that, oftentimes 
they're gonna pick whatever product shows up first. They're probably not gonna scroll down to the bottom. They're probably not gonna go to page two. So if you can get your product to the top of the search results, the chance that someone's gonna purchase your product is a lot higher. Now those are the sponsored products, but down below them are the organic search results. These are the results that Amazon shows and people aren't even paying any money for these. These are just the organic results. And we can see performance nut butter is pretty low down here, which is something I'm working on actively. And the way it works is the higher up your product is on the product page, the more sales you're gonna get. In fact, here's a chart that shows that. If your product is the first result when someone searches for a keyword, that product is gonna get the most sales followed by the second, third, fourth, and so on. And this is exponential. You can see that the first 10 or so results get majority of the sales. And the beauty of Amazon advertising is it gets your product to the top of the search results right away. And because of that, your product that's maybe, let's say ranked right here, starts to get more sales and Amazon will actually move it up higher up on the search results. And as it goes higher up in the search results, you'll get more and more sales. So by advertising with Amazon, your product's gonna get more sales, which is gonna move it up the rank because the way that this works is Amazon sees, all right, every time someone types in keto nut butter, the chance that they're gonna buy Travis's product, performance nut butter is pretty high. So you know what, instead of putting his product down here at result number 15, let's put it up to result number 10. And ultimately in Amazon, getting your product to the top of the search results is the way to win. And so you can see for Keto Nut Butter, this product right here is actually in first place. And it makes sense because that's the, the main name of their product and they're also doing Amazon advertising. So I have some work cut out for me to get to the top, but by doing this advertising with Amazon, it's gonna make my sales grow faster. Other benefit of running Amazon PPC campaigns is that you're gonna get data for what people are searching for when they buy your product. So you can set up what we're gonna be doing in just a minute called automatic campaigns, which allows Amazon to advertise your product for whatever it thinks is most likely to drive sales. Then you can look at the data and look at what keywords people are searching in order to buy your product. And you can start doubling down on those keywords, which is gonna ultimately lead to more sales for you. Now I'm gonna be talking about how much Amazon advertising costs throughout this video. But at the end of this video, I'm also gonna be doing a complete FAQ, answering all the most common questions people have when it comes to advertising on Amazon. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and I'm gonna try my best to answer every single one. So now let's put five minutes on the clock and I'm gonna show you how to set up your first ad with Amazon Ads Campaign Manager in under five minutes. So let's get started. The first step here is to go to Advertising Campaign Manager. You'll click on that and I'm gonna be using my girlfriend's Amazon business as an example for this video. And I helped her create her own passion product called Vino Cards. It's a set of wine flashcards that help people learn about different wine. So for this, we're gonna go click on Create Campaign and then we're gonna click on sponsored products. Now this video is gonna be mostly talking about sponsored products. There's also sponsored brands and sponsored display, which I'll explain what those are later in this video, but for right now, just click on continue with sponsored products. And this is the most popular form of advertising on Amazon. And we'll call this campaign automatic. As far as the daily budget, we're just gonna say $5. And I recommend spending at least $5. And honestly, the more money you spend, the faster you're gonna get data and the faster you can optimize your ad. And ultimately, the sooner you're gonna start making money with Amazon ads. But this is completely up to you. If you wanna start out with $5 a day, that's totally okay. Now, as far as targeting, we're gonna do automatic targeting. Later in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do manual targeting, which could be more profitable in the long run. In fact, it probably is more profitable in the long run, but to start automatic targeting is usually the best because this is gonna let Amazon advertise your product in the best way it thinks is possible. And so if you don't know what keywords to target, this is a good way to start. And even if you do, this is a good way to get lots of different data from Amazon. Now for campaign bidding strategy, I like to do dynamic bids up and down. This allows Amazon to raise your bids a little bit if it thinks it's more likely to result in a sale and lower them a little bit if it doesn't think it's gonna result in a sale. Now, if you wanna be really careful, you can always do fixed bids or dynamic bids down only but that's up to you. And then there's some other more advanced stuff we can talk about later in this video. Now we're gonna name the ad group. And the way it works is you have a campaign. And then under that campaign, you can have multiple ad groups. And in the campaign, you're setting information like daily budget and this different bidding information and a few other things. But then under the ad groups, you put even more targeting information. So this allows you to organize your ads a little bit easier. If you want, every campaign could just have one ad group or you could have one campaign that has multiple ad groups. Different people have different recommendations when it comes to this. So we're gonna call this ad group Close Match and we're gonna add the product that we're gonna be advertising. And so this is Vino Cards. Now, if you wanted to, right now, we could pretty much click Launch Campaign and you'd be ready to go. You'd be ready to set up your first automatic campaign. But I'm gonna show you a secret that's gonna save you a lot of money. 
instead of just setting a default bid here of 75 cents, first off, usually I would recommend going with whatever their suggested bid is just to start, and you can raise or lower that over time. But instead of just even doing this, we're gonna set bids by targeting group. Now there's four different ways to set up targeting with automatic ads. There's close match, loose match, substitutes, and complements. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off all the different targeting except for close match to start. And we're actually gonna set up different ad groups for each one of these different targeting groups. Now let me explain what these different targeting groups are. So close match basically will show your ad to shoppers that are searching for something that closely matches your product. So for instance, with Vino cards, they'd probably be searching for wine flashcards. That's a very close match. Now you can look at the different examples here and they say that if your product is Doppler 400 count cotton sheets, we'll show an ad when shoppers search for terms like cotton sheets and 400 count sheets, very closely matching your product with the customer search. Loose match is a little bit looser as you would imagine. So if your ad again is the Doppler 400 count cotton sheets, they would show your ad when someone searches for bed sheets or bath sheets or bath towels. Very different and probably not gonna be as profitable. You can also set up targeting for substitutes. So again, using the same example, if someone searches for 300 count cotton sheets, they might show your product. Even though it's not exactly what the person is searching for, it's a substitute. And lastly, with automatic targeting groups, there's compliments. Things like feather pillows would be an example of this. So if someone's searching for feather pillows, they're not searching for bed sheets, but hey, they might also be interested. Again, close match is usually gonna be the thing that gives you the most sales, but also, as you can see, it's usually gonna be the most expensive. So to start, we're gonna turn off everything except for close match. Now, another thing I wanna point out is negative keyword targeting and negative product targeting. This is huge. A lot of people waste a lot of money because they don't add negative keywords or they don't do negative product targeting. In this video, we're gonna save this topic for later because honestly, you don't need to do that right off the bat, even though I highly recommend it, it's not mandatory. So we're gonna click launch campaign. And you can see our first campaign is up and running. Now, if at any point you want to deactivate it, all you have to do is click that button. I'll explain some of the other information here. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna click on that campaign. And you can see as of right now, we only have one ad group and that's Close Match. We're gonna create another ad group. And we're gonna go through the same process, naming this one Loose Match and adding the product that we're trying to target. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna turn off everything except for Loose Match. Now we'll click that as well. We'll scroll down and we'll click create ad group. We'll do the same process again for substitutes, naming this substitutes, adding the product and scrolling down and unclicking everything except for substitutes and changing the bid price. Scroll down and click create ad group. And again, one more time, we'll click create ad group and this will be compliments here. And we'll add this product, we'll scroll down and we'll turn off everything except for compliments and change the bid and then we'll click create ad group. Now we can go back to all campaigns and I'm gonna show you how to set up sponsored products using keyword targeting. And this is gonna be one of the most profitable types of ads you're going to run because it allows you to have a lot more control. Automatic ads are great. It's especially good if you're starting out with Amazon ads, but if you really wanna start making a lot of money with Amazon ads, this next step is for you. And I'm specifically gonna show you five different types of campaigns you should be running with keyword targeting. Now the first step to setting up keyword targeted ads is to do keyword research. This is a very important part. And I highly recommend if you're gonna be doing keyword research to use tools like Helium 10 or Jungle Scout. Now I have the hookup with both those softwares. I have huge discount links that you can use. I'll put the links down below. But for me personally, I recommend and go with Helium 10. Now you don't need to pay for either one of these tools. First off, Helium 10 does have a free trial and they have a 30 day money back guarantee. So you can always sign up. If you don't get your money's worth, you can ask for your money back. But I'm also going to be later in this video showing you some free tools that you can use to do keyword research. You don't have to use paid tools to do keyword research, but it does help. And if you're going to use one of these tools, use the links down below, because as I said, I have the hookup with them, the best prices you can find around. So once you click on those links, you'll click get started and you can log into the Helium 10 dashboard. Now, the tool that we're gonna be using is called Magnet2. It's for keyword research and it's really powerful. Again, I'm gonna be showing some free tools you can use later in this video. And one of the free tools you can use is actually this Amazon PPC sheet. And this includes the Amazon PPC checklist and a bunch of other stuff that's gonna help you create your Amazon ads. And I will include this as a link down below. 
This is part of the free Amazon training series I've put together. So click the link down below to get this sheet and a bunch of other different worksheets and different things that I've put together for the free Amazon training series. Now, before you start even using Helium 10, what I'd recommend you do is use this sheet to start jotting down ideas of what people would search for in Amazon to find your product. And I have a bunch of different categories here. We'll talk about each one of these different categories because each one of these are a different type of campaign you should be running in Amazon. So the first one and probably the most powerful one is specific keywords. What are the things people are gonna be searching for in Amazon to find your product where when they search for that, they're looking for your exact product. So for vino cards, if someone's typing in wine flashcards or sommelier flashcards, or even an idea I just had, wine tasting cards, you'll probably wanna run ads against all these different searches. So this is what makes Helium 10 powerful. Let's take this idea that we have of wine flashcards and let's paste it in here. We can see at this point a bunch of information about this keyword. For instance, it has a search volume of 274, meaning 274 people a month are searching for this, which isn't a lot, but it's good to know that there is some traffic around this. It'll also give you a bunch of other related phrases and keywords that you can target. And this is where the real power is. For instance, right here, wine theme gifts. If someone is searching for that in Amazon, there's a high likelihood that they would be interested in vino cards. So what I recommend doing is going through this entire list and trying to get as many keywords as possible to target your ads, because we don't know what's gonna work and what's not gonna work. But another cool thing is this word frequency. So let's click on cards. And this will give us some other ideas that include the word cards. For instance, we have wine information cards. Well, if someone's searching for wine information cards, they're probably pretty interested in this product. Another thing you can do to find keywords that people are looking for to buy your product is to look up competing products and then click on the listing and get the ASIN for that product. And the ASIN is the unique Amazon identifier. Copy that and then bring it over into this other really powerful tool, which is called Cerebro and it's a reverse ASIN lookup. And it lets you know what keywords people are searching for to buy the product that you paste in here. So we're gonna put that product here and click get keywords. And this starts to give us even more ideas of search phrases that we can target our ads to show up on. Again, our product would perfectly fit this search. You can go through this and I would recommend going through all 1,946 of these different keywords and clicking as many that apply to you. But for now, let's just take these keywords and hopefully your list is gonna be a lot longer. Let's copy it, let's go over to Amazon Advertising, let's click Create Campaign, and let me show you how to set up the next campaign, which is gonna be Sponsored Products with Keyword Targeting. Let's call this campaign Sponsored Products Specific Search Terms. And we're gonna, again, put daily budget of $5. Now, one thing I didn't mention before is you can always put an end date if you wanna just be safe. If you wanna make sure that you don't go on vacation and come back and it's been running for months and months, you can always put an end date. I usually don't put an end date because I'm constantly going in and tweaking my ads. Now, instead of automatic targeting, we're gonna click manual targeting. And we can go with dynamic bids down only. This is really up to you. Different people have different preferences. And then you can go to the ad group name. And this is whatever you wanna call it. I'm just gonna call this specific keywords. And then we're going to add the product as usual. Now, this is where things get a little bit different. You have the choice between keyword targeting or product targeting. Now, now we're gonna talk about product targeting later in this video, but for now, we're just gonna stick with keyword targeting. We're gonna scroll down and you can see that Amazon gives you a bunch of different suggested keywords. We'll talk about this later as well, but for right now, we're just gonna enter a list of the keywords that we wanna target. Now, before we go any further, we gotta explain what the difference is between broad phrase and exact match. And the way this works is when someone is searching, let's say for wine flashcards in Amazon, if we go with broad match, that allows Amazon to show our ad if someone types in wine flashcards or if someone adds a word before, in the middle, and or after. So an example of this would be someone could write food and wine flashcards and our ad would still show. Or someone could type in something like wine glass flashcards. Now, why would someone ever do that? I don't know, but if they did, they're probably not looking for our product. So sometimes you don't wanna do broad match targeting. The benefit of doing broad match targeting is it allows your ad to show up for all kinds of different searches, things you would never think of. The next is phrase match. And phrase match only shows your ad if the phrase wine flashcards shows up in the search. Meaning that if a word comes before or after, your ad will still show up. But if a word comes in the middle, your ad's not gonna show up. So if you uncheck this and uncheck that and only had phrase match and someone put a word in between wine and flashcards, the ad would not show up. 
The last example here is exact. And with exact match type, your ad only shows up if someone types in exactly wine flashcards, no more, no less. So with that in mind, it's up to you which one you choose. I like to do all three to start just to get the ball rolling, to start getting some data. And usually there's gonna be different price points for all of these. So we're just gonna do a bid of 75 cents for now, add the keywords, and we can go in here and then we can adjust the bid one by one. Usually, again, I like to start with whatever the suggested bid is. For right now, I'm not gonna to get too in depth on how to figure out the pricing. We're just gonna go ahead and click launch campaign. Again, something to mention, if you're doing broad match or phrase match, that's where negative keyword targeting really comes in. Because the way that negative keyword targeting works is you can tell Amazon, I don't wanna show my ad if someone searches for a certain thing. For instance, I could have the negative keyword of glass, meaning if the word glass shows up in the search results, do not show my ad. And this is only really applicable to broad match and phrase match. If you're doing exact match, you don't need to add negative keywords. But if you're doing broad match and you know, hey, if someone types in the word glass, they're never gonna buy my product. But you know what, there's other times where someone might type something in the middle between wine and flashcards when they would buy my product, that's where negative keywords come in. This is a way for you to save a lot of money. Now, if you don't know what negative keywords you're gonna use right off the bat, that's okay. That's part of the process of running ads on Amazon. Basically, you run the ad, you get the data, and you see, oh hey, when people search for these certain things, they never buy my product. Then you start taking those keywords and you start adding them to the negative keyword list. This will make much more sense as I go through this tutorial. We'll then go and we'll click launch campaign. And again, I didn't put a ton of effort into coming up with these keywords and doing a bunch of in-depth research. I highly recommend you spend a few hours really going in depth, trying to figure out what keywords people are most likely to search for and buy your product. Now, before I go into the second type of keyword targeted campaign you should be running, I wanna explain something extremely important to you. And this is the idea of long tail versus short tail keywords. So short tail keywords would be things like wine gift. It's, a, it's pretty short. A little bit longer of a tail would be wine gifts men or chef gifts for women is even longer. And usually the more keywords someone types into the search, the more likely they are to buy a product, especially if their keywords perfectly match your product. An example of this is with my first company, I sold dance clothing. And one of the items we sold was dance pants. And I could target the keywords like dance clothing, but that's a very broad category. So it'd be better for me to target a keyword like dance pants. But even better than that would be something like high-waisted dance pants, assuming that's the product that I'm selling. And even better than that would be yellow high-waisted dance pants. Because if I sell yellow high-waisted dance pants and someone searches for yellow high-waisted dance pants, the chance that they're gonna buy my product are extremely high. So you wanna look for, whenever possible, longer tail keywords. Now the negative part about that is less people are gonna be searching that per month. But in the long run, if you're doing lots of long tail keywords, you're gonna have more profitable campaigns. So with that in mind, let's talk about the second type of sponsored product keyword targeting campaign you should be running. And that is what I call broad or generic keywords. And these would be things that people would search for and if they found your product, they'd be like, oh yeah, that's a really good product. It fits their search. So an example of this would be learn about wine, wine education, wine gift, wine lover gift. All those, if someone types in wine gift, they're probably gonna be really happy when they find vino cards. Again, we can use the principle of creating long tail keywords to make that even more specific. Wine gift for women would be an even better keyword in my opinion to target. Now, this is where Helium 10 and Cerebro really come into play. You can go through and scroll through this entire list of all these different keyword ideas, and it'll help you come up with different keywords that you can target in Amazon. For instance, using the magnet tool, I found wine themed gifts. That is a little bit more specific, and who knows, people searching for wine themed gifts might be more likely to buy my product than people just searching for wine lover gift. That's something that we'll test out. There's a ton of other ideas here, but we'll save that for another video. So we'll do the same process more or less again. We're gonna copy this list. We're gonna go into Amazon advertising. We're gonna click create campaign. We'll click continue with sponsored products. And we can call this campaign broad search terms. Now, another feature I'll talk about is portfolio. And portfolio allows you to put multiple campaigns into one quote unquote portfolio. And this is just another way for you to organize your different campaigns. It's a more advanced feature. We don't need to talk about it here. This becomes specially helpful if you have different products that you're running, because then every product might have multiple campaigns and you could put all those campaigns into one portfolio. But for this video, we're just gonna go ahead and put no portfolio for now. For the daily budget, we'll go ahead and put $5 again. 
and we're gonna click manual targeting. Now might be a good time to talk about this right here. And this allows you to adjust your bid and you can say, I'm willing to spend 100% more money to show up on the top of the search results or 100% more money to show up on product pages. Now, for the most part, I just leave this at zero. You don't have to worry about this too much. The next step is to change the ad group name and we're just gonna call this broad keywords. We'll then add our product just like we usually do and we'll scroll down into keyword targeting. And again, instead of the suggested list, let's go with interlist. And this suggested list is pretty powerful, but that's something we're gonna talk about later. I'm gonna keep all three of these checked. That's up to you, but for me, I'm gonna keep all three of these checked and I'm gonna click add. Now, another thing that's interesting is Amazon does give some suggested keywords based on the keywords we put. And so it says wine themed gifts for women. Well, that's really long tailed. Someone searching for that would probably be really excited to see Vino cards. So let's go ahead and add that. And we're gonna click add keywords. Now, some of these keywords are really expensive. Learn about wine is $4.33 per click. To be honest with you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove those keywords. I don't wanna even target those because at that price point, I don't think we have enough margins with this product to be profitable. The rest of them look more or less okay. We're gonna scroll down and again, I would highly recommend doing negative keyword targeting. Make sure you stay to the end of this video to really understand the way negative keyword targeting works and my approach to finding negative keywords. But we're gonna go ahead and click launch campaign. Now the third campaign I'm gonna show you how to run is what I call related keywords. And these are keywords that aren't necessarily someone searching for your product, but they're related. For instance, if someone's searching for wine on Amazon, we know that they're interested in wine and hey, they might wanna buy a set of wine flashcards or wine book. If someone's searching for wine book, they're not looking for vino cards. They're not looking for these flashcards. But again, it's pretty related. Wine posters, wine game, all these different keywords are related to the product that we're selling. Now, again, a really powerful way to find these different keywords is using Helium 10. Specifically, I like using Cerebro for this. I like to put a competitor product or product that's really similar to the product I'm selling and see what shows up in the search results. The way that you can do this is actually go to your product page if you're already selling on Amazon and look at the products that show up underneath your product. So if I scroll down, I will see here Wine Folly book. I'll also see things like this aroma kit and, and a bunch of other stuff. But we could take this book, we're gonna take that here, we're gonna put it into Cerebro and we're gonna click get keywords. You can then look through these keywords and you might find some new ideas. For instance, right here, wine tasting book, that's perfect. It's a longer tail version of what we already have. We already have wine book. So wine tasting book might convert better. We'll then copy these keywords. We'll go over to Amazon advertising, create a new campaign again, click on sponsored products, and we'll call this one sponsored products, related products, put $5. And then you'll want to change it to manual targeting. You can change your bidding strategy here. If you so choose, we'll go here and we'll type in related products and we will click add and we'll scroll down and we're going to click enter list and we're gonna click paste. Now, another little tip I wanna give you is if you have a really long list, you can always upload a file. You can upload an Excel file or a CSV file, basically. So we're gonna look here, wine tasting booklet. That's also pretty interesting. So I'm going to then click add keywords and we're gonna do the same process. We're gonna look at all the different bids. They all look reasonable and we're gonna go ahead and click launch campaign. I'm still gonna emphasize this negative keyword targeting. If you're gonna be doing phrase or broad match, you're gonna to wanna to stay for later when I explain that. But let's click launch campaign and let's move on to the next type of campaign you're gonna to wanna to run. And this is one of my favorite ones and it's competitor keywords. This is one of the few ones that a lot of people don't do. A lot of people don't know or think about this and this can be one of the most profitable ways for you to actually run your ads. And I've even seen as high as 8X ROI on these because basically what you're gonna be doing is taking your competitors and advertising when someone searches for their name. Now with Vino Cards, we don't really have any direct competitors, but there is the wine book, which is by Wine Folly, and there's also wine for normal people, wine encyclopedia. There's also some different wine games, like Wine Wars and Wine IQ, which I'll add to this list. We're then gonna take this, we're gonna go through the same process again. We're gonna copy this, we're gonna click here, go back to Campaign Manager, and we're going to add another campaign following more or less the same process. The name of our campaign in, put the daily budget, go to manual targeting, scroll down. Again, we'll put competitor products here, add our product and enter the list. And let's see what happens when we add these keywords. Now, something you're gonna notice is, look at these price points, well, they're a little bit lower. They're not actually that much lower, but they're definitely 39 cents to 60 cents. That's a little bit lower. 
and we're gonna click launch campaign. Now I'm gonna show you the last type of campaign you should run, and this is also a free way to do keyword research. So if you don't wanna use the links down below to join Helium 10 or Jungle Scout, you can always use this free method. And, and again, you don't need to pay for any kind of tool. When I first got started with Amazon FBA, I didn't pay for any kind of keyword research tool or, or any different tools like that. I did it using all the different free methods out there. And in fact, I'm gonna actually show you later the tool that I use that's 100% free. It's very similar to Helium 10, but it's, it's different. And I'll explain why it's different later. I used that tool when I first started out. Now, if I could go back in time and do it over again, I would for sure have signed up for Helium 10 at least for a month to get all my different keywords. But again, if you don't wanna use any of the different keyword tools out there, you can use this last method and we're gonna call this other keywords. And we'll put a daily budget of $5 and we're gonna click manual targeting. Scroll down, let's call this other keywords. Add the product and ultimately we're gonna go here and we're gonna look at all the different suggestions that Amazon actually gives to us. And we have wine tasting sense. Mm, maybe, maybe not. I don't know if I really care about that one. Wine party, that's an interesting one. In fact, one keyword that I know that's done well for us before, let's see if it shows up, is actually wine party supplies. But you can go through here and you can find all the different things, wine tasting. If someone's searching for wine tasting in Amazon, maybe they're throwing a wine tasting party, that could be another idea for a keyword, then they're probably likely to buy a product like Vino Cards. So what I'd recommend doing is just going through here, Fuegos de Vino. So basically what this is, is the Spanish version for wine games. That's really interesting that it comes up. Sommelier flashcards. So we had wine flashcards before, but we didn't have sommelier flashcards. So we could add these. Now, there's different ways to do this. What you could do, and probably the proper way to do this, would actually be copy this keyword and put it into the previous ad group we did that was called specific search term. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just gonna throw any kind of random things in here. And what we can always do is if we see that this keyword's doing really well, we can clean it up a little bit. We can put it into different campaigns, put it into different ad groups. The way that the ad group and campaign structure works for the most part is it's just for organization. Now, of course, you should add some negative keyword targeting. We're gonna save that for later, however. Now that we're done setting up keyword targeting for sponsored products, we're gonna wanna get into product targeting. And this allows you to show up on your competitor's listing. All these different products right here, these are all sponsored, you can see. And so people are paying money to show up on this person's product because if someone clicks on the Wine Folly Magnum Edition Master Guide, you know that they're probably pretty interested in wine. And if you know that they're interested in wine and learning about wine, being able to show up right here is very valuable because maybe they're gonna buy this book, but instead they see your product and they decide, hey, I'd rather buy that instead. Or maybe they'll just buy it in addition to because once people start spending money on Amazon, a lot of times they'll just add, hey, what's another product? Hey, what's another you know, $30 on a cool product? And so this is a really powerful thing. But before we get into that, let me just explain a little bit of what's going on right here. Now, as I already mentioned, you can scroll down and you can unclick any of your campaigns from active to inactive. And that makes it really easy. If you see that a campaign is losing you money, just quickly with a flip of a switch, you can turn it off. Now, some other things, this will tell you the status, whether it's pause or some other information. This will tell you the type of campaign. You can always click these buttons to sort your campaigns in order. So there's sponsored products, which is automatic targeting, manual targeting, and that's all we have right now. Um, it also talks about start date. So you can see with Vino Cards, we actually started advertising a while ago. We, we recently turned it off and I'm not 100% why we turned it off. That was up to my girlfriend. I think she wanted to stop spending money for a little while until she could go in here and optimize it. But we started running for this product back in January of 2019. You can also at a glance see the different budget for different campaigns. Now, once you start getting more data, you can click on a date range and you can see the different data for whatever date range you want. For instance, if we wanna say the lifetime of this campaign, we can see in total we spent around $5,000 and we've gotten $13,000 in sales, which is a return on ad spend of 2.39, meaning for every dollar we spend, we get $2.39 back. Now, something to keep in mind is this isn't the complete return on ad spend because remember, by spending money with Amazon PPC, you're gonna increase your organic rank, which is gonna to lead to more sales. So not all the data is shown here. Uh, you can also look at the number of orders for each campaign. And what I like to do a lot of times is sort this by return on ad spend and see which campaigns are doing the best. So I see that this broad match campaign was doing really well. 
and I know that I should do more of that broad match style of campaign. And I can see that this other Amazon suggested keyword campaign was doing a 12.39 return on ad spend, meaning we spent $12 and we made back $150 in sales. So we should do more of that. I don't know why that was turned off. That's something that I'll figure out later, but that is the kind of campaign that should be on and running forever. Same thing with this one. Spent $100, made $600 in sales. That's a 5.65 return on ad spend. I don't know why that campaign was turned off. Campaigns like that should not be turned off because basically when you have a successful campaign, you're printing money because you're spending a dollar and you're getting $5 back. You're spending a dollar, you're getting $12 back. Now, what you should do is if you start seeing campaigns like this, uh, and actually all these campaigns, they're, they're pretty good. Even the worst one, we spent $500, we got $800 back. Remember, this number is revenue and not profit. So this campaign may have lost a little bit of money, but on top of that, this isn't really the real number of sales because this may have helped it so that we got other sales. It may have helped it so our organic rank went up. This isn't always a black and white metric, but if you wanna be safe, you can make sure that your return on ad spend is at least covering the cost of your product and all the Amazon fees, but that's up to you. Remember, advertising with Amazon is just that, advertising. In the long run, you may end up seeing that money back. You gotta think about the lifetime value of your customer, meaning maybe someone buys a box of Eno cards and they show their friends and their friends show other friends and, and you get more and more sales. So eight, this $800 in sales could have been a lot more if those people shared and spread the word about Vino cards. Or someone could have seen our ad and come back from a different device and purchased and we don't really know, that's not always tracked. But now that we've talked a little bit about this, let's talk about the next type of ad that we're gonna run, which as I mentioned, is product targeted ads, which will allow you to show up on your competitor's product. So the first step is to figure out who your competitors are. And if you have a really unique product like Ariana does with Vino cards, there really are no competitors. There's no one else out there that has an exact wine flashcard set. But what you can do is start finding similar products. In fact, when I first started Performance Nut Butter, my Amazon business, there was no competitors. There was no one else out there selling a product like mine, but there were products that were relatively similar because there was no premium keto macadamia coconut cashew blended nut butter but there was other types of nut butters. So the point I'm trying to make is even if you don't have direct competitors, you can look in Amazon and you can try to find closely related ones. Now we already started making a list earlier of some different competitor products, but what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to go to each one and we're gonna have to get the ASIN. And you can get the ASIN again by clicking up here and making a copy. Let's go over to the Amazon sheet and we will go to competing products and we're gonna put the ASIN in here. Now, if you want, you can also put the product name and you can give a rating from one to 10 on how good you think this product would be to target. So I'm gonna go through and quickly and add the ASINs from all the products that I think are competitors. Once we get this list together, we're gonna go here, we're gonna make a copy, we're gonna go into Amazon Advertising and we're gonna go to Campaign Manager. We're gonna go to Create Campaign and we're still gonna be doing sponsored products. Now, before I go any further, let me explain what sponsored brands and sponsored display is. So these down here are sponsored product with specifically search targeted keyword ads, this is actually sponsored brands. And this is an ad for one of my arch enemies in the nut butter world. And I'll link a video somewhere up here talking about the story behind this. But basically this company came in and they were interested in potentially buying my company. But the owner of this company has a hundred million dollars when he started this company. And they spend way more money on advertising than I could ever possibly spend. But the thing about sponsored brands is you need at least three products to really do it effectively because you need to show three different products to take up the entire header of the search results. Where sponsored products, all you really need is one product. So that being said, I have seen some people do sponsored brands with one product only. And it lets you show the logo of your company and it lets you take up probably the most valuable real estate of the Amazon search results, which is the top. As I showed you earlier, the higher up on the search results you can be, the more likely you are to get sales. Now, people aren't gonna click on the sponsored brands as often as they are the actual regular results because people know very obviously that they're ads, but still you're at the top of the search results. So sponsored brands can be very powerful. Now I have seen some people do sponsored brands with just one product, but it doesn't seem like it's the best use of your money because you might as well show three different products here. There's also sponsored display, which would be this type of an ad here. Now, I believe to do sponsored brands and sponsored display, you need to be brand registered, which means you need a trademark. I have other videos talking in depth about that, but let's get back into setting up product targeted sponsored products. And again, you can name this whatever you want, but I'm gonna name this sponsored products competitor product targeting because it's very specific with what we're doing. Put a daily budget of $5 and we're gonna switch this to manual targeting. You can put whatever you want here. I'm just gonna leave it as dynamic bids down only. Same thing here, we'll put competitor 
products. We're going to add Vino cards as usual. Now, this is where the big change is. Instead of doing keyword targeting, we're going to click product targeting. And the cool thing is, you don't necessarily need to do a ton of research because one thing, Amazon actually gives you all the different suggestions right here. Now, a lot of these suggestions are bad, but look at Wine Folly was one of the first ones that comes up. Keep in mind that Amazon has a ton of data of what people buy that also would buy your product. So a lot of times, these are some pretty good suggestions, but use your own brain. And I recommend going through this entire list and adding as many of these as possible, but you can also enter your own list. So let's go ahead and enter the own list and let's click target. You can then scroll down here and you can apply whatever bid you want. And look at how cheap this is. Eight cents, 30, I mean, 39 cents actually isn't that cheap, but nine cents for wine wars. The reason for this is not that many people are competing against this product. Most people don't spend enough time doing their research and finding out other competing products. This is another way that you can get eight X at least return on your ad spend. But we're gonna go through here and we're just gonna apply whatever bid that they recommend. Obviously, if it's too high, remove that product but we're gonna go ahead and exclude our brand. Our brand is Vino Cards right here. I'm gonna scroll down and we're gonna go ahead and launch campaign. Now you can repeat this process for similar products. I like to have one campaign for basically competing products and another campaign for similar products. Again, similar products to me is a broader category. Competing are things where someone might buy that product instead of my product. Where similar products, I'm like, hey, if someone's interested in that product, they might also be interested in my product. I'm not gonna show you how to set that up. Instead, I'm gonna show you how to set up category targeting with product targeting ads. And the way this works is it allows you to target an entire category, an entire Amazon category. I'll explain in just a second. Let's just call this category targeting for now. We'll put a daily budget of $5 and we're gonna go to manual targeting. The rest of the stuff will leave the same, category targeting, and we're gonna click add for our product. We'll scroll down here and we're gonna click on product targeting. Now, instead of individual products, which is what we did last time, we're gonna do entire categories. And on Amazon, every product has a category. For instance, our product is in the category of home and kitchen, kitchen and dining, wine accessories, wine education, and games. So we're gonna target all other products that are in that category. Any product that has that category on Amazon, we're basically gonna target them so we can show up in the products related to this item category. Now, if we wanna see what products we're gonna be targeting by targeting this entire category, one thing that you can do is go to your product, in this case, obviously, we'll click on the product listing and scroll down to the bottom here and you can see the category. And so it says it's number 15 in wine education and games. So we can click on that because again, that corresponds with wine education and games. And so basically we're gonna be targeting all the products in this category. Now, if you notice something, there's people that are in this category that really shouldn't be. All these different socks, they're in this category, even though they really shouldn't be. And the reason they're doing that is they're trying to game the system. They're trying to be number one rank bestseller for a category. So what we'd probably wanna do is we'd wanna go through and we'd wanna take all the ASINs of these products and let's, let's paste this into a spreadsheet here and we paste all the different products basically that we don't want to advertise in. And so this is where negative targeting starts to come in. So we targeted this one, but we can scroll down to the bottom and we can, we can say exclude brands or exclude products. And we can enter a list and let's say we just did this one for now. And we can say, hey, we want to show up on every product in this category except for whatever ASINs that we include here. Because honestly, if someone's buying, if you can read this, bring me some wine, they're buying that sock, they're probably not looking to buy vino cards. But if they're looking to buy, for instance, this wine journal or this wine flavor circle or a lot of the other products in this category, they probably are looking to buy this product. So you can also, on top of that, go into here. So they have the suggested categories or you can go into search and you can go through and you can find exactly the kind of categories that you want. You can drill down, let's say kitchen and dining, and we could go down to wine accessories here, and we could say wine education and games, which we've already targeted. Maybe we also see wine accessory sets is another category that we should target. But once you go through and you add all the different products and all the different categories that you wanna target, you can go ahead and click launch campaign. Now I'm gonna get into some of the biggest mistakes that beginners make with Amazon PPC that end up costing them thousands of dollars. But first I wanna share with you some free keyword research tools. And one of the ones that I talk about a lot on this channel 
is the Google Keyword Planner. And to get to the Google Keyword Planner, you do have to have a Google Ads account, but it's free. It's free to sign up for one. You're just gonna click, first you need a Gmail account, then you're gonna click sign up. And once you, you've signed up, you'll have to go through and complete your first ad, which I do have a tutorial, I'll link it down below, but it's free to, to do an ad. Just turn off your ad as soon as you set it up. Once you're in Google Ads, you can go up to Tools and you can go to Keyword Planner here, and it will bring you here and you'll click on Discover New Keywords. You'll do the same process as you would with Helium 10, and this is free. So this is a really powerful keyword tool, but keep in mind, this represents how much search volume and it represents what people are searching for in Google, which can be very different than Amazon. But if you are really cheap and you're trying to do this and save a ton of money, this could be an option. So let's say wine flashcards. We would do a similar process here. Let's click get results. And you can see it tells us about how much what the average search volume is. It gives us a much wider range though. And it really doesn't give us as much uh, keyword ideas here and depending on what your product is you might get a lot more keyword ideas than this so, so for instance actually we did get sommelier flashcards so we did get one other idea obviously helium 10 is going to give you a lot more data than this when i first started in full transparency this is what i used to figure out what my keywords were going to be i honestly i didn't even know about helium 10 or any of those other jungle scout or any of those other softwares when i first started and if i could go back in time i definitely would have paid for at least one month to figure out what my keywords were to really optimize my Amazon PPC. The other free tool that I already mentioned is this suggested keywords tool. And this is also really powerful. It's gonna give you a ton of ideas. Sometimes I find ideas in here that I don't even find in Helium 10. But the problem with this is it doesn't give you any idea of what the search volume for this is gonna be. And honestly, I think that this is a really great tool. Again, if I could go back in time, I would use both this tool and Helium 10 just to figure out what are all the different keywords and really optimize my Amazon PPC. The next question I get all the time is, how much will this cost? And my answer is, it depends. I recommend starting with at least $5 a day, and the more money you spend, the faster you're gonna get results. But as far as what you're gonna pay per bid, well, that's where this, the suggested keyword tool can come in because it'll tell you exactly what the suggested bid is. And so you know for every click, you're gonna be paying this much money. And you can actually, on top of that, figure out what your conversion rate is for your product page and then you can, just, you can figure out basically how much you're gonna be spending per conversion. For instance, if you had a 10% conversion rate, which is not very good with an Amazon listing, you're gonna be spending 68 cents per click with this keyword wine tasting, and if you only have a 10% conversion rate, you're gonna be paying $6.80 per sale. Now, that's gonna vary wildly depending what the keyword is. For instance, wine tasting, I might have a really high conversion rate. It might go up to 30% conversion rate with this, meaning I'm only gonna be paying you know around two dollars or so per sale uh, but then with another one like wine club month i might have a five percent conversion rate i might be paying ten dollars per sale making it so that keyword wouldn't be profitable so you really have to test this out you got to try a lot of different keywords and see which ones will result in sales the next question i get is how am i able to travel around the world for free using points and, and miles and this is one of the biggest things if you're going to be spending money on Amazon PPC, spend it on a credit card. Now always pay off your credit cards, all that kind of stuff. Don't spend more money than you have. But if you're gonna be spending money anyways, a lot of people make the mistake of taking the money out of their Amazon seller account directly to pay for ads. Do not do that, use a credit card. And if you use a credit card, you can get free travel around the world. I've been able to do that for the last eight, nine, 10 years. Almost none of the travel that I've done have I paid for. And it's been because of credit card points and miles. And I'm gonna show you some of the top credit cards right here. Now, if you're gonna be spending money on Amazon PPC, then the gold Amex card or the platinum Amex card is by far the one you wanna be using because the gold Amex card, not only when you sign up do you get 35,000 miles, which is enough to, it's pretty close to enough to get you a round trip ticket to Europe, but on top of that, you get 4X miles, meaning for every dollar you spend, you get four points, which converts into to miles with airlines. And so a domestic flight will usually cost you around 25,000 miles. I've been able to go to Europe on 40,000 miles. I've been able to go to South America on 40,000 miles. So this is what I would recommend for most people. If you travel a lot and you're a big spender, if you're gonna spend at least $15,000 in the first three months, and these offers change all the time, by the way, I'll put links down below to my top favorite uh, business credit cards in order in the description down below. And if you use my link, you're gonna get access to like 
some premium rewards. The links down below have better offers than you can usually find in other places. But with this one, you get 85,000 points, which is equal to at least 85,000 miles. But this comes with a bunch of bonuses, it's like free lounge access at like those airport lounges, uh, gold status on a bunch of hotels. This is the one that I'm actually gonna be applying for very soon because this credit card, it just gives you so many cool perks. You actually get 5X points for every dollar you spend. Another credit card I'll just mention right now, and again, these offers could change, is the Delta uh, Gold Amex. And the cool thing about this is it's, you get 40,000 bonus miles when you sign up. You only have to spend $2,000 in purchases within the first three months. So this is enough for a free round trip ticket to Europe. And what I do is every few months I apply for a new credit card, I get the sign up bonus, and then every few months after that I, I do another one and another one because I'm already spending a few thousand dollars a month on Amazon PPC, why not get the free travel? And again, I'll put current links to my favorite credit cards down below for business. Another hack when you're first signing up for Amazon advertising is look in your emails, look, sometimes you'll have special offers. A lot of times you're able to get a free $50 in credit. So search around, maybe even contact Amazon if you don't have that credit. But now I wanna get into the biggest mistakes, the most common mistakes that beginners make with Amazon PPC. And as a reminder, if you're not already part of the free Amazon FBA course, I'll put a link down below for an email signup. And the cool thing about this free Amazon course that I put together, not only are all the videos available on YouTube for free, but when you sign up with the link down below, you're gonna get access to this free worksheet. You're also gonna get access to a Facebook group I put together just for people in the free Amazon course. On top of that, I will set you up with an accountability buddy, meaning I will introduce you to another person that's in the free course, as well as a group of people, so you can meet weekly with those that group of people, and entrepreneurship is extremely lonely, and I'm trying to help out entrepreneurs, specifically Amazon entrepreneurs. So if that's something you're interested in, join for free, you'll get the, you'll get the worksheet, a bunch of other worksheets that I have, and you'll get access to the Facebook group and a bunch of other benefits. Now the first most common mistake that beginners make with Amazon PPC is they go after short tail keywords. I talked about this earlier in the video. Don't go after extremely short tail keywords. Really start thinking about those long tail keywords. So for instance, instead of wine, you should think about targeting wine gift, or even better than that would be wine gift for women. Now for everyone's product, this is gonna be different, but if you wanna have a lot of success with Amazon, trying to find a lot of long tail keywords is probably gonna save you more money than going after short tail keywords. The next mistake that beginners make is they don't add negative keywords. If you are gonna be going after short tail keywords, or if you are gonna be doing broad match, you need to find negative keywords. And there's a bunch of different ways to do this. One, you can use the free method with the Google Keyword Planner, as I mentioned before. Or again, go into Helium 10, go into the Keyword Research section and click on the Magnet 2 Keyword Research tool. Then put in the keyword that you're looking to find negative keywords for, click Get Keywords. And what you can do is go through this list and look for any words that you know that if someone is searching that word that you don't wanna show your ad for. So we have wine flashcards. If someone is saying wine flashcards, cocktail what you're going to do is go through this list and see what people are searching that's related to this and find any words that you think if someone's searching that they're probably not going to buy my product for instance cocktail if someone is searching wine flashcards and cocktails and funny enough you can see right here wine recipe cards is pretty popularly searched and i don't know our cards aren't really they don't have recipes on them per se so recipe might be a negative keyword but then you can look through here and maybe you wanna do a negative keyword targeting for Spanish because our product is in English. You can, you can really use your imagination and I would go through this entire list here, all the different things, looking for as many negative keywords as possible. And once you find those negative keywords, you can actually go into the campaign and you can add them. And what's really cool about this is you can add them both on the campaign level, meaning for every single ad group within the campaign, if one of these keywords shows up, do not show any of the ads in this entire campaign, or you can add it on the ad group level. And let's say you have multiple ad groups within one campaign, and you know one of the ad groups you wanna add certain negative keywords, but you don't want that to affect the other keywords in the other ad groups, then you could do it on the, the ad group level. I'll show you how to do that. You click on ad groups, you'd go into your ad group, and then you'd click on negative targeting and you'd add any negative keywords here, same, same process. The other thing you can and should be doing to find negative keywords is once you started running your ads, especially the automatic campaign, but really all your ads, you're gonna go into here, you're gonna go to reports, and you're going to click create a report. And you're gonna run what's called a search term report. And I'll show you what one looks like in just a second, but let's click run report. Now, once that's done processing, you're gonna get a report that looks like this. And it's gonna give you a ton of data. This is so powerful. What you're paying for at the beginning with Amazon ads is you're really paying 
for all the different data. So it'll give you this entire spreadsheet and it'll tell you here was the campaign name, here's the ad group name, uh, the targeting, and but specifically the most valuable column is this column right here. It'll tell you exactly what people typed into Amazon that your ad, that triggered your ad for your ad to show up. So what you can do here, and there's a lot of different things you can do. One is you can go down and you can look at each one of these individually. For instance, Brazil nut butter pa squeeze packs. My product doesn't have Brazil nuts in it, so Brazil should be a negative keyword. And then you can keep going down this list, looking at all this, but the, really the best way to do this is to actually look at the data. And what you can do is look at where you're spending the no most money and not getting results and lower those bids, but also look at where you're spending a lot of money, like I spent $30 on keto dessert and I got zero sales, so dessert should be a negative keyword, possibly. Keto chocolate, spent $23 and got zero sales. So maybe chocolate should be a negative keyword. Now, that's not enough data to know for sure because who knows, maybe tomorrow I get two sales and this ends up becoming a profitable keyword. But this report's gonna give you so much information on keywords you should use as negative keywords as well as products that you should have negative product targeting. So if you see anything like this, that's got like B, zero, blah, 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 like a bunch of numbers, that's a ASIN and that's a product. Which leads me to the next biggest mistake beginners make with Amazon PPC. They don't get enough data. They don't let their ads run long enough to get this really powerful data so they, they can optimize their ads. And that's the game. When you first start out with Amazon PPC, do not expect to be profitable. Can it happen? Yes. When I first started, I was profitable with Amazon PPC because there wasn't a lot of competition. But as the competition came in, it was harder and harder to be profitable. But I had something they didn't. I had months, if not years worth of data so I could really optimize my ads. And that brings me to another mistake that beginners make. And I made this mistake a little bit more than I should. And that's running above 100% ACoS. If you're spending more on PPC than you're making in revenue, that should be a red flag. Now I was doing this because I was being really aggressive and I was trying out a lot of different things and I learned from this data. I said, okay, you know, a lot of these campaigns aren't profitable. So I tweaked them and ended up making them profitable. But be very careful because if you do that for too long, you're spending more money than you're making. Now do keep in mind as you're spending money on Amazon PPC and you're getting sales, that is going to increase your sales rank, which is going to basically allow you to get more organic sales. So just because you're losing money on Amazon PPC, you actually might be still making money because you're increasing your organic results. Now, the last mistake I see so many beginners make is they're selling a junk product. Do not sell a junk product on Amazon. Even if you master Amazon PPC, if you have a junk product, you're not gonna be profitable. You're not gonna be successful with Amazon. And as I mentioned, this is part of a free Amazon FBA course. You can get the entire playlist by clicking down below, look at the different videos, see which ones apply to you. I've included in that playlist a bunch of detailed tutorials just like this one. So click on that playlist, check out all my free Amazon FBA tutorials, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.